All right, this is the fundamental counting principle, and uh, it's pretty neat, but uh, looking at the way the book has it, it may be a little bit confusing, all right? So if we look at this situation, uh, we can see that uh, if we were to look and say that what we're going to do with these two buckets is choose, and again, we're choosing these randomly, but let's choose first a marble out of this bucket and then let's choose a marble out of this bucket uh, then we can figure out how many possibilities there are before we ever choose okay and we do have to know how many are in each bucket but uh, based on how many are in each bucket we can figure out again how many possible outcomes there are now again this is not really asking for the outcomes but it's just asking for how many outcomes are there. So let's look. We've got two buckets, right? And this will give us a total number of outcomes. Well, how many marbles are in bucket one? So we're going to choose a marble from bucket one. There are four marbles in bucket one. How many buckets? How many marbles are in bucket two? Three. So we just multiply these together, and that would tell us that there are 12 possible outcomes. All right, so this is a screenshot of one of the local merchants that sells iPods, all right? And it's telling us, first, the model. How many different models are there? Four, so there would be four different outcomes in this case. But, of course, when you buy an iPod, there's a lot more that uh, you have to choose from. So if this was all we had to choose from, again, we have to consider how many models there are. There's four. How many different storage capacities are there? Well, let's count. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven. If this was all we had to choose from, how many different types of iPods would there be? Uh, be four times seven, which would tell us that there are 28 outcomes. But once again, this is not all that you have to choose from from iPods. Let's look at more options. Okay, so if this is our options. Again, now we have we have four different models. We have seven different storage capacities. And then finally, you get to choose your color. Well, how many colors are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're going to take that and multiply it by 10. So how many outcomes is this? That gives you 280 choices of iPods. Okay, so that's a lot of different choices that you have when choosing an iPod. And all we've done here is use the fundamental counting principle. All right, so once again, here we're just finding the number of outcomes that there are when choosing a helmet that comes in three colors, two styles, okay? So let's look. First, we've got colors. Then we have styles. All right, well, how many colors are there? Three. How many styles are there? Two. So let's go ahead and multiply these together. How many different... Uh, bike helmets do you have to choose from? Six. Six different types of bike helmets. All right, so after we use the fundamental counting principle to figure out how many total outcomes there are, we can actually figure out a probability case. Okay? So all we've got to do after that is find out how many of the types of outcomes we want to happen or that we're looking for and then divide it by how many total outcomes there are. Alright, so in, in this example what we need to do first is figure out how many total possible outcomes there are. So in terms of waist size, how many different outcomes are there? Five. What about length? It's three. Style? Three. And we're just going to multiply these together. And what we'll get here is 45. So 
So there's 45 different types of jeans to choose from when choosing from waist size, length, and style. Now this one specifically is asking for a 32 waist. So that's this one. 34 length right here. And then that, that it is slim fit. Okay. So we can connect these. So how many different types of 32 by 34 by slim fits are there? One. And we'll just divide that by the number of outcomes there are. And this would be our final answer. So is it likely or unlikely that genes that the genes would be chosen? So let's say we throw all these into a bin, or that you have to choose them at random, uh, then it would be very unlikely. All right, so this one, uh, this one again is going to give us a very easy situation to find because with number cubes, rolling a 12 can only happen when you roll a 6 and a 6. That's the only way that it can happen. Uh, so that would be 12. So <clears throat> that, is, that is one of the ways. That is the only one way that you can find it the sum of 12 using two number cubes. But how many total outcomes are there? Well, if we look at number cubes, all right, so there's, you've got cube number one and cube number two, and what you'll do is figure out how many different possibilities are there in cube one? Six. And what about cube two? Well, it is the same shape, has the same numbers, there's six different possibilities. We multiply these together and get 36. So the chances that you roll 12 with two number cubes is 1 out of 36. Now, if you made this a decimal, it would be a very small number. So we would say that this one is actually very unlikely. All right, so this, this example, it says, the sandwich shop offers four different meats, two different cheeses, and then, of course, they have a bread that, that it's going to go on. But it doesn't tell us how many uh, different types of breads there are, but it does want us to figure this out, okay? Uh, and they did tell us how many different type of uh, offers that they have, okay? So let's look at meats first. So there's four different meats. There are two different cheeses. And again, we do not know how many different types of bread there are. Uh, but it does tell us the total is 24. So we know that all of this stuff multiplied together should be 24. Okay, well, 4 times 2 is 8. So 8 times x equals 24. And what I'll do is just, uh, this is exactly what it looks like at the end of the switch and stay game sometimes. So we just got to divide by the coefficient of x. So x, which is the number of types of bread there are, just going to divide this by 8. And 24 divided by 8 will give you 3. So there's three breads, you might say. Okay. We only need to circle that part. All right, this example, a cafeteria offers oranges, apples, or bananas as its fruit option. So you only get to choose one of them. It offers peas, green beans, or carrots as the vegetable option. Uh, so again, you can only choose one vegetable. Find the number of fruit and vegetable options. If the fruit and the vegetable are chosen at random, what is the probability of getting an orange and a carrot? Then is it likely or unlikely that a customer will get an orange or carrots? And carrots, okay. 
Well, let's look. Uh, first, we need to identify what our two options are. Fruits is our first one, and vegetables is the second one. Now, as it turns out, since we're multiplying, it doesn't matter which order we put these in. Okay, that's the commutative property of multiplication. So let's look. How many fruits, different types of fruits there are? Well, you've got oranges, apples, and bananas. That's three. And how many different types of vegetables are there? Peas, green beans, and carrots. That's another three. So if we wanted to figure out how many types of combinations there are, we just do three fruits times three vegetables. That'll give us nine different combinations. Now it asks, what is the probability of getting an orange and carrots? Well, there's only one oranges and one carrots. So that's only one way that it's made out. So it's one over nine. That's a 0.1 repeating as well. So is it likely or unlikely that a customer would get an orange and carrots? So if we were to look at this in percentages, that's about 11%, okay? And so is that likely or unlikely? Yes, that is very unlikely that a customer would get an orange and carrots if they were chosen at random.